Yeah, you satisfied now? I don't need to delay it any longer. It's your uh, your thing. I should... to be as accommodating as possible. Was that me that just pulled something in front of my webcam, or is that you? That was me. I had to have been you, right? Okay. Yep. So hold on. Let me close everything I don't need. Make sure everything's as smooth as possible. I am recording. Already when you are, sir. All right. Hello, everyone. We are back with the People's Champ podcast after a couple weeks off. Had a couple busy weeks for both of us. Uh, this is our first episode since our Scalamans Academy review. How you doing, Jordan? Doing all right. Yeah. Yeah. How's how's life treating you? It's great. I got about a week till school, so I'm just full on summer vacationing it now. Yeah. I've decided I've I... done enough. <laughs> I just moved back to Big Rapids uh, for school, so I moved back on Friday into our new place. So, new location once again for the podcast. Oh, um, yeah, gotta get Jordan up here. You wouldn't like it though. There's uh, there's no AC. So, Oof. Yeah. Why ain't you got AC, brother? Uh, that will because... only matter for like <laughs> two months of your time up there, but. Correct. It's so. got heat, I'm assuming. So. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But right now I've got a fan blowing on me, and we've got like four fans throughout the house. We open up all the windows at night and blow in the cold air. Yeah, that's, that's then, one of the advantages of the fancy mic I bought. I like have a fan literally a foot from the microphone, but it doesn't pick it up. Because yeah. it's smart enough to discern that it's not a human talking. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we should just get right into things. Yeah, so start with what the, is your... What is my uh, what is your experience with Scalamance Academy so far? Been pretty solid. The first like week maybe. The majority of all I played was Melee Druid. I started out oh, yeah. very badly with Melee Druid. I had like a thirty five percent win rate in twenty games. I could not win for the life of me. And then I realized like some of the like intricacies of the deck and I just started winning every game I played. And then I took like a few days off, and Melee Druid got sent to the sun, and I'm very sad. Yeah, I uh, I started out with a variety. I switched decks a lot. But I ended up playing a lot of Odd Pally. That was really fun. Um, yeah, like Tour Guide is nuts in so many decks. It's insane. Yeah. One minute I, I really liked it. I was playing Shutterwalk Shaman for a while too. Um, Odd Warrior has made a bit of a comeback because of the some of the new decks like Pain Lock, which is uh, degenerate. But yeah, Dark like, Glare Warlock. Dark Glare Warlock. Yeah, you just kind of you play Tour Guide on one, and then on turn two you. Coin Dark Glare, Hero Power, and then you play like nine Kobold Librarians and play a giant on turn two. It's just disgusting. Play a Flesh Giant. Um, yeah, but Dark, Dark Glare has been dominating since the patch we just got. So uh, yeah. let's go ahead and since talk about that. Patch. Yeah. Alright, it came out on August 18th, so a little bit ago, but. Uh... Since our last one. Yeah. About a week ago. Mm -hmm. The so, first patch made me... This first one made me very sad. It's what nerfed Malagos Stewart into the sun. Yeah, but it made me not die to Starfires and UIs on turn one either. So. Well, that never happened. That's not true. It people, had to to, a couple times. people had to do that in Innkeeper to get it in turn one. It's like impossible. It's like one in three hundred. Uh, 
even, but it even was if a... it is like turn three, it's still like okay, well, that gave me no time to do anything. Yeah, yeah maybe like, I don't know. That like, deck wasn't actually good. But... Like even Odd Warrior couldn't armor out of it. Was a bit annoying. In time, like Odd Warrior, because they. Oh, went I'm so pretty soon. sure Odd Warrior could coin here power on one, here power on two, and not die. That deck does like 35 at most. <laughs> It has to overflow at some point to heal you too. It's not able to do it first. Yeah. But yeah, I mean this this card was Kael'thas Sunstrider. Now each spell, each third spell costs one instead of zero. It makes sense. It was a problem in standard, and that's what they know for around for the most part. And it also did enough stuff in wild. So I mean, it, it was it made sense. Yeah, it was a good. It's change. a it's a, a kind of, like. It makes sense because it allowed really stupid things, but it's also kind of sad because it allowed really fun things. So it's like depends well, on the kind of player you are. If you like the fun OP things, or if you like fair things. So some people love yeah, it, some people hated it. A lot of people were calling for this nerf to be the third spell you cast each turn costs zero, mm. so you can only do it once. I think that might have been. That would still be for good. Yeah. The fun stuff. Better yeah. for keeping the fun stuff around, but not just to generate. You could still, you the like, Lightning Bloom, UI Coin, Kael'thas into Inner, or UI on, like, turn four. As melee yeah. and, like, be pretty well off. Yeah. And that would probably make it still playable. I, I don't know that this is really playable in any deck anymore right now. It's good a good enough effect that it'll eventually come back around, but... I don't know. Three is a lot better than one. So. Yeah, I mean, the one really hurts it a lot. Yeah. All right. And then after Kalthos, what else did they lose in Wild? Mind Render Lucia got nerfed. Two mana, one, three, battle cry. Swap hands and decks with your opponent until your next turn. Now, it costs three mana. Yeah. Which, for the yeah. most part, in wild, makes it relatively the same card. You can't really, like, turn one, steal a king's bane, or turn two, steal a king's bane anymore, which is kind of funny when people would do that. But it's still good enough that it can, yeah. can do some pretty stupid things. Yeah, and still steal uh, quest rewards and stuff. And stop it's aggro. Cheap enough that it's degenerate. Yeah. You can like play it on five and then play a couple of one mana like Dark Lair cards and stop them from being able to go off or things of that nature. Yeah. But it's, it's, I mean, it's like, I get people hate it. And I understand why they hate it, but it, it's at least like a fairly, like in some matchups, fairly hard card to play perfectly. Sure. The problem with that argument, though, is if there's ever a matchup where it's like super brain dead easy to figure out when to play it, then suddenly like the whole card just becomes viewed in that light. So we'll see. I mean, I don't play that much. Like I love have a high legend wild, so I don't see this deck that often. But I can imagine this card would be just absolutely infuriating. Like if you're an aggro deck and you have to play with a priest hand for a turn, you like you just don't have a turn. <laughs> like yep. what are you gonna throw their like mass disparity away? Like, okay, they have like four more AoEs in their hand probably at the time you do that. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean... But it's it's definitely aggro's better. Aggro's not really the issue with this card, right? Because like, no. the deck set this Beats combos. In, beats aggro anyways. So this is just like, yeah. oh, you want to play Mechathune? Too bad, you can't. This card exists. Uh, like, yeah, they play much. and then like play a Dorian or your plot twist or something and then... Or a cataclysm. Yeah. Not getting any audio. Hold on. That's fair. One sec. Uh, You're not getting anything to Audacity? No, they're not getting any audio. What kind of audio? At all? Like stream, stream audio. Is it your voice audio? Where did my. Hold on. Audio output. Is that better? Test, test, test. Hello, oh, hello. Device. 
Yeah, stream on till the echo your mixer and make sure your mic is working. All right, well, it's carrying you. Yes. Yes, it is. Hi, chat. It is. Hi, chat. Audio input capture. Add source. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Well. Okay. <laughs> Well, all right. Well, that should have fixed the audio right, problem. Well, I don't know why it just randomly takes problem. my mic off sometimes. I don't know why it just randomly takes my mic off. All right. Yeah. So. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So we're just recording an episode of our podcast right now. Uh, you missed the first couple minutes, uh, but it'll be the audio should be good on uh, YouTube and on Spotify. So, yeah, we we'll talked about going. Chaos and Mine and early Shia so far. Now yeah. we're going to talk about the Battlegrounds changes that happened a week ago. Yeah. All right, let's go on to the Battlegrounds changes. Gentle Megasaur removed from Rips. the Battleground pool. Tragic. Yeah, you know what's so not tragic, lost. though? You know what's great? Our, Losing Arcane, Arcane Cannon. Cannon. That card can burn. Never to see the light of day again. This is... It's interesting, because Megasaur was, like, the reason to play Murlocs, right? And now it's kind of... Well, it was a reason like, to pivot to Murlocs and play Murlocs. Playing Murlocs is still acceptable if you manage to live, right? But now you can't switch on one turn and have five poisonous to my shield minions with, like, ten health. Sure. Now Which, Megasaur... Now Murlocs, you have to go either massive health and get like and then manually poison them all with Toxfin, or you have to be playing George and like poison with Toxfin and then give them Divine Shield with George. You would certainly want to get a lot more Amalgadons now because Amalgadons yeah Amalgadons is like the best card right? list. Yeah, Amalgadon is like the key card in Murloc comps now. I feel like. Other than, you know, Toxfin. Yeah, and then Arcane Cannon. I, I, yeah, that, I don't card that card can burn. That card is yeah. so unhealthy. I do miss Megasaur, because I think the problem with the current game now, and what people have said before, is if you don't have, like, one comp that's definitively the best, you never have a reason to ever pivot. You just hit what you hit, and whoever hits that thing earliest is generally going to be the strongest. So now the game is just like whoever hits a Kalagos or like a Razor Gore first, they kind of just like win. It's or kind of annoying. Yeah, or they manage to hit like a Goldrin or a Mama Bear, and they just you yeah. just but like dragons are like so much easier than beasts for the majority yeah. of players. Like you just if you just hit a Kalagos like turn eight, you just win most of the time which is sure. kind of dumb but it is fun in some regards still to like make your board better and not have to worry about just having fights you physically cannot do anything about so there's positives and negatives to it because now you don't ever have a matchup you're like well I can't win because before like if you saw the dude in Murlocs and he hit you were just lost like there's hardly anything you could do you can try yeah. like ghouling and like selfless hearing, but that's just like so much lost stats in your board to put those minions in. I do think at some point they need some other reason to pivot, probably, but because that has a nice skill gap in the game, but it's okay. For now, we'll enjoy our mega swordless world. We're now, yeah, now the fights think... to like the only situation is now you can't win a fight is if someone hits an amalgadon. Or three sure. Amalgadons, which I've had happen to me, which is just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, eventually they're going to, I mean, probably pretty soon, they're going to feel the need to add some more minions. Maybe, like, maybe Another we're going to elemental. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they'll add stuff. They update this game quite regularly, so surprisingly. It's not very popular, you, you so that's not what, a surprise. But. You know what beasts I'm surprised they haven't added yet? Which one? Crackling Razor Maw. Friendly and Adaptive Beast. 
Yeah. You'd have to put that at what? Five Four. stars? You think five? Four or five? It's a three two. I mean, it, that's not the good effect of it, right? Right, you never keep it in once. your board. Yeah, it's only adapts in once. Maybe four is fine. The thing is, you can get is... Divine Shield, though. Yeah. Which no, is... Poisonous. Yeah, they'll never add that card, because then you can get Poisonous Hydras, right? Oh, that'd be great, actually. No, that'd be... <laughs> you'd play 2-4 Poisonous so... Hydra and kill, like, 3 60-60, like, dragons. Like, that'd be dumb. So? That would just be the metagame. Everyone would just have Poisonous, like, Beast and Hydras. Well, you still have to hit the Adapt. Ah, it's not that hard to do. Brands in the game mode. Yeah, that they're definitely that's yeah, definitely why they haven't added Kraglin Rates more. Poisonous kill you would not be fun. That'd be very degenerate. Imagine Illidan. Yeah, with Illidan it'd be irritating. It, sure. That would just, just be play, There's no counter. You, like you just have to just force divine shield. Play around cleave better. Yeah, but like here's here's the thing. Like, if you want a poisonous hydra, you can already pretty much just do that. No, it takes forever like, to get a big enough hydra. That's like a win con in itself. You do it with the whole game toward. Like, Edwin gets top four lock like, if they just get like one big minion. Like, I had a second place game as Galakron where my board was like a five four an eight nine a seven six a five three a two four Bran and then a thirty thirty taunted Divine Shield Foe Aper, and I got second place on turn thirteen. It was the st stupidest board I've ever seen. It was terrible. But this one large Foe Aper just like one for five every fight. <laughs> It's like it's old comp on its own. If I could put poisonous on that, and then have like only need two cards and have like four of them, that'd be stupid. Eh, maybe they'll never add Razima with poisonous in the adapt pool. <laughs> that would be really dumb. I'd be shocked. They ever take? Do you think they ever change the adapt pool some more and bring Mega Score back? And, like, maybe, maybe in the they future, take, if they add some more stuff to it, standard and construction constructed. Poisonous wasn't the problem. Divine Shield was. You can yeah, still get poisonous the, on your Murlocs. Just, sure. With the thing you just said, though, with like poisonous beasts. Sure. They do. You if you take poisonous out of the pool, and you add Megasaur back, you add. Uh, and the thing add is, is if like off. if they were to in constructed add more adapts, something you'd see is probably like a cleave adapts. <laughs> like in Battlegrounds, it would just be like, uh oh, that doesn't really work. Well, they're not. They're ne they'll never add another adapt constructed because a no, rose was one off. They'll event. Uh, they'll like visit old they, keywords eventually. Like probably not. But we'll I don't see. know. For ten years, they can keep coming up with new keywords without it being really confusing. Maybe they'll I eventually would love them to revisit stuff. Revisit stuff. A lot of people would like them to. I'm sure they will eventually get back doing that a little bit more, as opposed to like only having death fight will be a thing that they do more in Battlecry. Yeah, and combo, and overload. Yeah, and those choose, are class. And choose kinda. one. Class sure. stuff, which is a shame. That's a topic for another time, but choose one should just be a thing that every class has. I mean, that's just a nice keyword. Why does it have to be a Jura identity? I mean, it doesn't really make sense. Overload and uh, yeah, overload, overload and combo also. Are the same way. So overload yeah. and combo should also. I mean, overload's not that fun or healthy, but combo and overload could definitely also be other classes. Yeah. Alright, the next one on the update is much less important than losing cannon and mega sword. Sorless gained one attack, went from a two mana or tier two three two to a tier two four two. Which I mean sure. Yeah. Not that Minor much to bales. talk about. It makes it slightly better. Yeah, a five three think. is kinda nice, but a four three is kinda the same. I don't know. Yeah, because I think um the issue with Sorolus, once they moved him to two, is you just like you just kind of take him if you're doing like the Death Rattle Beast comp, and there's nothing well, better to take. But. I mean, the only time I ever take him is that, like I hit like him and like an Imprisoner, and I just like play a five three and a three three. It's just, like an okay stat of minion, right? Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It was weird because they like nerfed him because of the Hook Tusk like Sorolus build, which was just kind of degenerate. But then they nerfed Hook Tusk, so like was Sorolus a problem with anybody else? Like, why is he not a one star? Three one, you know, it's weird. But yeah, I don't know. He's like an okay card. I don't mind buying him once you get him to like four attack or four health, four five health type thing. Pretty solid in the mid game. 
I'm definitely sure. not going to like have a swordless squill anytime soon, though. Yeah. This next one is much more, I guess, impactful. They took Rat Pack from a tier two and bumped him to a tier three, which is which still is weird wild. to this day. It does make yeah. sense, though, because if you even just give him plus one attack, just one attack, just give him plus one, plus one, he's exact same as a tier three card. With a better death rattle. Already. Yeah. So, it, it kind of makes some sense, right? It's a bit strong for tier two. Yeah. And going and along... About, yeah. The interesting thing about this change, and, and the one next, is that... Mm -hmm. So, pack leader moved from tier three mm -hmm. to tier two. Yeah. And that's a that's an interaction that always felt awkward to me. So you get the rat pack get, first? You would get the rat pack first, right? Yeah. yeah. So, now... You get the pack leader when you're at tier two. You tier up to three. You get the rat pack, and it feels much more intuitive. Yeah. But so I do like that part of it. It is weird having rat pack move though. There's a lot of these changes that are like undoing things that have been around since the beginning of battlegrounds. So rat pack feels very healthy as three though. I still buy them quite often. Yeah. Especially now that I have like tier two rat pack leaders that are on my board because a turn two like a tier three or tier two i keep saying turn two but a turn a tier two three three is just like a fine buy yeah if you you, you hit like upside. any of the beasts that are other than the kaina it's like you already got positive benefits so a rat pack is still a very good card i think it's very healthy at three when i first saw it i was like what why it's a tier three two two but then i saw the pack leader change and it made a lot more sense it feels better to play you curve out pack leader into some beasts, into some mama, into some beasts. And it makes sense to play the whole game as beast that way, right? And in a world yeah. where you have no reason to ever transition, because they've gotten rid of Megasaur, you just want to hit your stuff early, and whoever hits it earliest and keeps going through it and keeps improving their board the best will win. And that's a fun experience for players. So this, I think these two sets of changes, uh, pack leader and rat pack, make a lot of sense. And I've certainly found them to make, like, more sense when playing them too yeah the next one is similar to the uh Sorlisk nerf they took mantras macaw a card that recently was nerfed from tier two to tier three and they added plus one plus one to it to make it a little bit better at picking up like when you see it and not finding it later because it fights a little bit better now as a four three on tier three yeah it's still a bit of a gimmick early. You have to really get like one death rattle that's quite good and probably a taunt for it to work ideally. But it, it it's less painful now to buy it early and kind of like as you're going with beasts prepared to hit like a gold that, with it. And that breakpoint matters too because like if you're doing oh, yeah, this yeah. with a spawn, if you're doing this with a spawn and you hit like a three attack minion mm -hmm. and the spawn thing goes off, now it lives instead of yes. dies. And it also kills five health or four health things so like a three four on tier yep. two dies to it now and it lives when it hits in prisoners and it kills the like homunculuses of the world like these tier ones and twos which a three drop should probably be doing right tier three should kill tier ones and twos that are buffed for the most part yeah so this it's a nice change it's not the best card it's in a healthy spot i don't it's still kind of hard to decide when i'm supposed to pick it up when i don't have like the full perfect beast comp going there's some interesting shenanigans you can do with like spawn in Azoth or Nadina or something, but nah, fam. We or people's the, champ. We yeah. take the golden people's champ and the golden baron and the golden <laughs> macaw. And we take it to rank rank one, one legend, bro. Yeah, dude. Yep. 15k <laughs> MMR, dude. Hell yeah. Yeah. This next change is probably my favorite change in this set of changes. With oh yeah, we're moving. Megasaur from the pool. Moving Primal Fin Lookout, which is if you control another Murloc, discover a Murloc. Tier 5, 3, 2. They've now made it a tier 4. However, which it only discovers better. it only discovers minions now from your current tavern tier or below. Yeah. So you can't actually hit a Gurgle or a Mugan until you're those tiers, but it allows you in the early game. Like, if you're, you know, the world they're trying to create is where you hit your Murlocs and you play Murlocs all the way through, you hit your Beast, you play it all the way through. This helps with that a lot, to not just, like, die yeah. trying to do Murlocs. Because it can help you find your triples, it can help you find buffs. 
and it can allow you to sit at four for like an extra turn maybe and spike some like health buffs and stuff to stabilize before then going to five well you can still hit this card and you hit it more often because there's more of in the pool because it's tier four and it allows yeah. you to just get stats going i think it's really nice it's always been a super fun card to play now that it's not like allowing you to do stupidly broken things with megasaur i think it's just a super fun and healthy card i'm a big fan of yeah. it yeah and the other thing about this change is now there's a reason to triple on three as Murlocs. Because before there was no. like nothing good on four. Like you could get Toxfin, huh. but the Fair odds enough. of you getting Toxfin wasn't great. I was but still now, always tier to five with Murlocs if I could. If you can. Because then you're you tier four to find these the next turn and you can hit like your brand or a gurgle. But sure, if you really absolutely have to, I suppose that is a fair point. Just another check mark on the things of why it's better big yeah. fan of this change it's a very fun card to play can all you did a couple seers you're like a triple and a, a seer or a triple and a gurgle type thing and that just feels really powerful when you have a brand and you're making big things and there's nothing wrong with making like 40 40 30 30 20 20 murlocs now because somebody else you know a position or two off me is doing the same things as dragons and beasts right yep so i like it a lot i'm a big fan of it I did like that change a lot. This next one, I actually don't mind at all either. He's 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 uh he's kind of uh, surprised me a bit. They've uh, they've changed Nat Pagel entirely. They've yes. completely just destroyed his text and changed it. It used to read overkill summon an O2 treasure chest, which would summon a random golden minion, which much like Cannon was just a general unfun thing that sometimes when you need to fight on the spot, and other times it's absolutely nothing. Right. Yeah. Now it says whenever this attacks and kills a minion, doesn't have to overkill, just has to kill a minion, add a random minion to your hand. So kind of like generating you money. Sometimes a random triple happens. Yeah. Well, so sometimes, he's Sometimes you get a battle cry buff. He definitely fights worse now than he used to obviously because this treasure oh, chest doesn't sure. gift you a big deal but he's not that bad he still has around a 50 percent win rate from turn seven onward until like really the whole game where the lowest he hits is 46 but where it's really interesting and <laughs> kind of like dumb but it's like the fun kind of dumb whereas before the fun kind of dumb was you like your o2 would hit like a bomba and you'd kill your opponent which was a stupid dumb now it's a fun dumb where you get it off like a boat or something and, it, you know, it's just an 8-5. It's, like, pretty big, but it doesn't, like, necessarily just ruin the game for your opponent. But you just get, like, a random card in your hand, which is kind of fun, right? Yeah. As opposed to just absolutely ending the game for your opponent. So it's, like, you still get, like, a kind of fun. It's, like, ooh, a pagel. Ooh, a random card. Nice. And then without it being, like, oh, my opponent's dead, I hit a golden in my mind. Or a yeah. golden. It's you know, a little bit. Down. It's a little bit more tolerable now because now yeah, it's yeah, like for sure. an R it's an RNG value generator instead of a huge opponent. tempo swing. Yeah, it doesn't just kill you. Yeah. It's a much healthier uh it keeps the fun without having the like downside of being stupid. I like the card. I don't necessarily buy it that often. But I like it when it shows up. It's fun. Yeah. I've had it where I like we're born to this Lich King or whatever and I get like sometimes I get like even like up to three cards of fight. It was pretty stupid. I just had like a handful of random garbage minions at one point and I was like, what am I doing here? What is what is happening in this game right now? Yeah. Because if you get him early enough, he just like sometimes lives and kills things, you know, like it's a four three or four five or something. Two one Murloc, like I don't know. It's kinda of funny. Sure. Yep. The next one is one that goes really well with the pack leader changes and the murloc change. You're just trying to make it so you like play one thing kind of the whole way through. It's a nice, simple, fun, you know, game mode that they're trying to make battlegrounds right. And that's Mama Bear change, which I think this card's been changed more than any other card in battlegrounds. I feel like this card's been changed like five times, and it's always the same change. They just can't make up their mind <laughs> and what they want. Yeah. So it used to be a six mana five five that gave beasts five five. Before that, it was a four, five man, five tier, four four that gave beasts four four. Before that, it was a six. Before that, it was a five. Before that, it was a six. It keeps going back and forth between tier six, five five stats give beasts five five, and then tier five, four four stats give beasts four four. They have changed it in this last patch to being a tier five four four that gives beasts four four, which goes with the next beast. They changed beasts a lot. We're gonna get to another one after this, but this is another one that lets you go pack leader into some beasts, and then mama bear into some beasts. And kind of get like this beasts going 
throughout the whole game where they can compete. And Malware being at yeah. five and being slightly weaker is a nice way to do that. It makes tiering to five not like a hoping to hit Baron Simulator. There's a, lot, a few other interesting options. Without it being, they can see in the OP the turn you hit it. I'm a big fan of Mama Bear being a tier 5 card. Yeah. It's one of those cards that, like, it's decently strong. I don't love it because I'd always get sniped when I play it, but I see the appeal there and the kind well, of fun, exciting use, ads player. Use your Hound Masters better, bro. Well, yeah, I mean, you got to find those sometimes, right? But yeah, this allows you to go pack leader into some rat packs, into some triples, into some mama bears, into some other rat packs and things. And kind of get like a token strong beast build going. Maybe you hit a gold drain at some point and you toss out the rat packs and toss in a parrot, but other times you're fine getting a top four, three, two, whatever, just with mama bear, triple mama bear, getting some big buffs. Yeah. This card's hard to fully talk about without the next change, which is gold drain the great wolf. Got kind of a similar patch where instead of it being a five tier or six tier four four, it is now a six tier four four that gives beasts five five. So they slightly buffed it because in the patch before this one, they made it a six when it used to be a five. So now they've made it slightly stronger as a six tier, which I mean, sure, it allows you to go pack leader into rat pack into mama bear into gold and it like just kind of all makes sense. There's a progression here when you're doing beasts, and that's fun for players, and that's kind of what they're going for. And it just all makes sense. It all it all sounds good. I hardly ever hit gold nowadays. It's really hard for me to do beasts. I got to get a lot better at beasts. Just like just hitting this card, like when you're spiking in early six, you don't really have a board of anything. It's so weak the turn you first hit it. You must have to hit like the mama bear and stuff first. You don't just die. It's been interesting to figure out how to do it for me, but I like it. It was weak because it's six. With it only giving four four, now it goes five five a little bit stronger. This patch basically they just said, all right, we're getting rid of Megasaur and we're gonna make it so beasts and Murlocs play out throughout the game a little bit healthier and a little bit yeah. simpler. Make us so people don't have it's to change up as much. Keep a simpler play going. To compare it to constructed, it feels kind of more like Hearthstone now. Yeah, like kinda. you just play your good, you play your good things on the turn that they're good, you know. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. part of why I like battlegrounds. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of picking the biggest minion right that turn. Sometimes I have to pick one that I think will help me win, but a lot of times I'm just like, you know what? I'm just gonna pick this like foe reaper or this, you know, big dude here and just win the fight and maybe get a top four type deal. Tempo's tempo's fun, and this patch allows you to do that with a lot of different heroes and yeah. comps now. It is kind of a like battle dragon simulator right now, with a little bit of beast thrown in, a little bit of mech. But dragons are what gets first in the majority of my games. At your 10k MMR. Yeah, I mean it's not the top one percent or anything, but it's like I think the top like three percent probably. I know not like. Sure. I think what was it eighty four? Let me check real quick. I can do that very easily. Oh, yeah, 9,400 plus is top 5%. So 6K is probably like top 4%. Although 12K is 1%. So if you kind of do the math there, like 11K is like 2. I don't know. I'm guessing 10K is probably top 3%. What's 7K? Uh, top 50% is 6,300 plus, and top 20% is 7,600 plus. So I'm in like the 30th percentile. Something like that. Not bad. Yeah, those numbers just keep going up. I mean, back when XR released the numbers, 8,700 was top 0.1%. And I was like well, yeah, 8,000 then. <laughs> People just keep going up. I got to play more and catch back up. Yeah. People are climbing. Stop playing so much Rocket League. <laughs> Still there? I think I lost your audio. Lost my audio? Oh, there you are. You didn't lose my audio. I just didn't talk. Did All I right. stop in the middle of a sentence? No. Mm. All right. Well, All the next right. change, I don't know. You, you, know, you don't pull that, so I'm kind of leading. That makes sense. We're in a Battlegrounds hero changes, which is only four of, and then we'll uh, be done with this patch. The first one, Lady Vosh, has been removed from the Battlegrounds hero pool, which, to be honest, reading it now, I'm not even sure I knew that. I guess it I makes sense. Either. She's just not fun. 
She wasn't very good. Yeah. I picked her from time to time. I found her okay, but she wasn't anything special. I don't even remember what a hero power does. If I'm it honest. was when you teared right. up. Uh, you replace the minions at Bob's Tavern with one from that tavern tier. So you could do things uh, like level up on two, having two drops, freeze the two drops, sell your one drop, level up to three, have two, three drops there, and then a six money buy two, three drops. That was kind of like a one turn slower AFK. Where then sure. you are also tier three, so it was actually kind of slightly better, but your three drops obviously could suck. You don't get the discover two, you just get the two that are there. Yep. But it was kind of hard to play. There were a lot of players, myself included, that would always just like. <laughs> I'm a real like level, buy the triple, play the triple kind of guy. <laughs> so too many times I leveled before buying the triple and I re rolled it into something from a higher tier. Ugh. That, that was funny to watch people do that. But yeah, I mean, she just wasn't anything exciting. And they added some new heroes. And I everything's. Think I played her once. Everything's fairly balanced right now, man. It's like the bottom, like 10 heroes or something. 10 to 20 heroes. I don't even know how many they are. There's probably about 10 to 15 in the bottom, and then everything else is pretty competitive. But yeah, Lady Vash is gone. I don't know. Well, there's one hero that got changed that is dominating everyone. But there's actually we'll two. Get to... We'll get to both. Oh, of them. yeah. Yeah, the first yeah. one is one that was dominating everybody, was Captain Yodora. He had a lot of that fun but stupid, like we talked about with the treasure chest, where it was a fun to be able to pop off and get big golden minions and things, but it was really unfun when you had to verse him on their pop-off turn and just take, like, all your life. Like, he would yeah. he would consistently do 20-plus to people on turn 8, which was just unhealthy. They used to be dig for a golden minion, four digs left, to now five digs left. So instead of going off on turns 4 and turn 8, you go off on turns 5 and turn 10, which means you're usually losing an extra, like, 8 to 10 health before the first one. And then you have to stabilize for an extra, like it's two turns later now for the second pop-off turn we used to kill people. So now instead of killing people, you're trying to not get eight. His average placement yeah. now went from like an absurd, like 3.1. Like it was absurd. It was like the highest. It's a lot of them have really ever been. It's like up there with the Tyrians of the world in the old millhouse. So now it's like a 4.9. Tyrion was kind of boring. They need like I fun or neutral Tyrion. minions and like, I don't know. So play Draxis, same thing, but with demons. But demons are gross. <laughs> demons are lit. So yeah, I mean, Yodora is pretty bad now. They've delayed his first one by two, his second one by, or his first one by one, his second one by two, his third one by three. Like every turn, it adds an additional dig, right? Every time you go off, so he's falling yeah. a lot. But it needed to be done. He was really degenerate. He would kill you on turn eight a lot of the times, and it was really stupid. Now when you get him on your pop-off turn, you're like, maybe you lose, but you're not going to die. And if people like random buried treasure, they can still play him and try to have fun. This next one surprised me quite a bit. Good old Reno Jackson. We're going to play a game here. Do you remember before I used to say, two gold, make a friendly meaning golden once per game, right? And before he said... And before that, I said four, and before that, I said three. Like, it went from four to three to two. They've been slowly lowering the cost of this guy. Do you remember what he sat at before, an average placement, like the tier at all, when he was two gold? When he was two gold, he was, like, fifth average finish, right? Yeah, he was, like, a tier four. Yeah. Down with, like, the test grade mage and the curators at, like, a 4.9 or, like, a five. Like, pretty Grandma, bad. Like, don't, don't talk bad about my test grade mage. Hey. <laughs> It's like bottom ten heroes, bottom twenty heroes. He's pretty bad. Guess where he is now in the in the one through thirty on the heroes. All right, I'll give you I'll give you a hint. He's top ten. Uh, four. You think he jumped to fourth, hey? I do. Slightly optimistic, but not that far off. He is sixth at four point thirteen, and Kilthos is fifth at four point eleven. So he's basically fifth. Kelthos is garbage. Kelthos is, is very good. Ten. You gotta understand, Kelthos is very good. Kel'thas he's not. Is he's trash. not even hard to play, man. Just buff a good minion, like, and you win the first four fights, dude. It's not I that get hard. Every You're time. doing it wrong. <laughs> he's the top five hero that you came out. <laughs> yeah. So now we haven't got to one of the changes, but Mayav is number one because Eudora used to be number one, got kicked off. So Mayav is there, and then there's a few. You know, Daryl, Rafam, Kael'thas, Reno. And then, what we're going to talk about next, Lich King. Lich King went from also being Tier 4 kind of garbage 
to being the second best hero in all of Battlegrounds. Yeah. By one simple change, his hero power used to cost one, now it costs zero. Which is disgusting. Now it costs zero. Now Which costs doesn't seem like a lot, do. because turns like eight and onward, it really isn't that big of a deal. But those first eight turns, it saves you about 25 life. <laughs> at the worst, yeah. maybe like 10 at the, at the average. It's pretty ridiculous. His, like, one to hero powers went from, like, all kind of a nice whatever to just, like, you know, 97% plus every turn because some people forget, which is hilarious <laughs> to me. It's funny because you can see one to hero power, right? And the majority of people forget, like, the first three turns because they're not used to it. And then, for whatever reason, turn 18 is also kind of low. Imagine dying on turn 18 because you forget the hero power <laughs> after doing it for 17 turns. But, yeah, I mean, you just Yikes. you get, like, Scallywag on turn one now. And you get a 2-1 that makes a 1-1. And then you get a 2-1 that makes a 1-1. You beat, like, everything. It's yep. it's absurd. You beat a 3-5 from Yag. You beat a 2-4 and a 1-1 from Curator. And it lets you have two spawns. We hit a spawn, like, without having to spend money on it. It's pretty degenerate. It's very strong. Yeah. Yeah. Blitz King dominates the early game now. And it gives him... When you dominate the early game like that... You get so much extra health. Chance. Yeah. You get the extra chance to, like... Then you have more time to find the final comp because you can afford to take a few hits. For sure. It's very good. He's an insta pick now for pretty much everybody. He's dominating. If you see Lich King offered to you, you should probably pick Lich King. His yeah, best yeah. two comps are Beasts, obviously, because Beasts is like the best one and his hero works really well with it. Or Max, because you can, you know. Revive a spawn with your Baron, revive a Kangers with your Beast, revive an Egg type deal for free, and Basically, it's just it's really good. Comps are really good. Yeah, Death Rattles and Beasts. Yeah. And then Dragons is the third best because Dragons is just the next best comp. But sure, that is what it is. Also, kind of interesting. You could actually like if you do the like, typical like you have like a Taunted, Poisonous, Divine Shield, Malgadon, and then like five Demons or five Dragons rather, and then the Dina. You can like Reborn then a Dina. They'll attack at your Divine Shield and your Poisonous Amalgam. Your Dina will attack. They'll attack at your Divine Shield and your Poisonous Amalgadon. Your another Dina will attack because it was reborn. And then they'll attack your Divine Shield Poisonous Amalgadon again. That's pretty stupid if you pull that off. Yeah. The first game I played with Lich King after the new patch, I got a Golden Begurgle. And then I did this like whole brand run without Bran. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Where's my Bran? But I just kept winning fights because it turns out when you revive a Golden Begurgle back... It's like a 12 health minion, which for the majority of the game just like kills a minion on its own. So like I had it taunted. So I would like my like they would attack into it. It would attack into something. So it like kills one or two things. And then it comes back after buffing your whole board. And sometimes just kills another thing and buffs your board again. It was crazy. Yeah. Like it's just this hero power is just absurd. Like what I'm talking about with like the big but Google obviously worked before. You just had to spend your last money instead of rolling, which was fine. But saving so much life allows you to do something like aggressive max and murlocs without being at 10 life. Which, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, he's just undoubtedly the best. When you make stuff free in Hearthstone, it's very good. That's true about Constructed and Battlegrounds. Uh -huh. Free stuff is good. All right, next one Galakrond. Galakrond's oh, greed. Yeah. Um, it's replace a minion in Bob's tavern with. One that costs one more, I believe. Yep. And now it also freezes that minion. Which is good, because now you can, you know, mm. tier up and actually still buy other good so minions. Replace a minion in Bob's Tavern will from a higher tier and freeze it. It's, uh, it's not that great, though, actually. It's only marginally better. His average placement is still five and a half. Sure. But now it's not, like, eight, so... Although it has changed, it used to be good to hear power in turn one, but the stats have changed. It's actually now forty five percent of the people hear power in turn one, which I suppose yeah. makes sense. That means they probably no, they're still hear powering at three, which is weird to me. Because if you're not going to hear power in one, you might as well just hear power in two, get twos, and then make it a three, as opposed to making it a two and then making it a three. It's the same either way, which is strange to me. But it is what I, it is. Every time I get forced to play Galakron, I just go for the six right away. Oh yeah, I mean that's how you play him. It's just a matter of like what's the best way to get there. Yeah. 
Uh, and then that's the last of the hero changes. They had a couple of bug fixes. I, this first one, I don't even know what it means. Oh, it's oh, it's not just battlegrounds now. It's there was also standard in this patch. They fixed some like player animations, some incorrect art. Yeah, South Sea Strong Arm actually has the right colored hair now. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, it That's was like funny. weird. Like it changed without warning, and no one knew why. That's Apparently funny. it was a bug. Yeah. Yeah, and they fixed some things that caused the game to crash. That's the patch. Mostly battlegrounds, but a little bit of standard because it was it had just come out, and they wanted to tweak and it wild. up. Yeah, it happened to work in wild, but I think both of those cards were written standard too. Sure. Just why they did it. I mean, it just happened to be nice that they also had something in wild. So, if you had to pick like a couple of your favorite heroes nowadays, what, what would be warriors? Battlegrounds, yeah. Dude, I had this question asked me the other day, and I really don't know. I do. I will say this patch now. Oh right now is much healthier there's a lot more heroes in the tier two and three range that are worth playing yeah like uh, tier two is pretty large it goes a little bit on a pure man and toki and alex Shazza. like alex Shazza got so much better with this patch because dragons are nuts now and you're not having like cannons kill you keep a little sure. bit more alive he's up to alex Shazza's up to tier two right behind edwin but yeah with there being one two three four five six 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 heroes in tier 1 and 2. You, and you have 4 choices. You pretty much always get a decent hero. I'm the king of not doing it though. But there's a few decent tier 3s. And some, like if you have a tier 4, at least some of the tier 4 ones are like fun. You know? If you're going to yeah. have to play a trashy hero, at least you get to play like a nice fun test game or like a electron game. Yeah, but, uh, I'd say, like, if I'm not talking about like good heroes if i'm talking about heroes i enjoy playing that are also sometimes good for me sure. i'd say probably like i really like shutterwalk and bran and tess and millhouse and bran and tess millhouse is just good millhouse is just good correct. yeah millhouse is just a good hero um, I, like Re I like Reno, I like George. Yeah, like Reno's Arana. really good now. My favorite character, I think, is probably George. He's yeah. consistently the hero that is like terrible, that I do way better than average on. He's top 5 in my wins, and not top 5 in my most played. I'm net 82 MMR, I average 3rd as George. And I have no business averaging 3rd as George. Yeah, I, I always do pretty well with George too. I think the key with George you is just have you to force go. a divine shield tier four comp. Like you don't try to win. You just force. And in some games, you high roll enough that you do win. But you can I, eke out top force pretty well with him by just like here powering a few strong minions. I don't really force Murlocs or force demons with him, and I end up getting like top two most of the time with him. Yeah, big demons probably now isn't too shabby on him because there's not uh, poisonous to really ruin that as much. Yeah. Big Demons. It's actually not that great still, but I can't imagine it's that bad. It's just not the best. Sure. Beasts are pretty good with him because you can, like, you know, divine shoot all your beasts and it's the best comp, right? So. I think Murlocs is, like, the only way to get poisonous with divine shoot Murlocs now is George. Go George. Yeah. And yeah, um... you can... yeah, I mean, I think George is probably my favorite hero. Like, sure. Lifetime, I just find him very fun. Right now, Liching is super enjoyable, because it's just, like, very powerful stuff is being done. Yeah. I've also really grown to, like, Sky Captain Craig. I'm averaging second and a half on him, and I'm up, like, a 200 MMR in, like, three games of Sky Captain Craig. At first, yeah. I saw him in, like, Tier 2 or 3, and I was like, eh. He's kind of nuts, dude. Because yeah. he lets you, like, level up to 4 and then 5, kind of like Alex. But, like, the turn when you level up, you're not, like, it's not a weak turn because you can level up to, like, four or five and then have a whole other turn's worth of money. Like, get seven right yeah. money back. And that allows you to then start rolling on that tier or, like, triple and then buy some stuff with it. Like, he's just, like, the first two games I played with him, I got second both times. It was, like, the idea, right, where you, like, triple something. So, you, like, level triple and then hero power and you get to, like, spend eight more money to, like, you know, buy battle cries with your Caligos or something or beasts for your gold or whatever. But I found the last time I played him, you can just like level up to five and then hear power and like roll and just find like a good minion or two. So it's like a normal turn where you just replace a bad minion or two while leveling and you just sometimes like are fine. You just like win the fight. You just had a top four. He's pretty fun. 
I don't mind your axes, but I can only handle them in small doses. Yeah. I end up uh, picking like the best hero all the time because I every yeah. time I pick a fun hero, it's just like you just I tank down to like sixty five hundred. I'm like, man, what am I doing? <laughs> or farm's pretty get... fun just because he's good. Like, yeah. I'm a big fan I... of Deathwing. I like the different play style and buying different minions and having somebody to think about every turn, like what hero what minions are good with this hero specifically. I fluctuate between sixty five and seventy four most of the time. Mm. I'm almost always in that range. I've played one game as curator since I got stats and I got first, so my, my average placement on curator is one. <laughs> Yogg's also one of my favorite heroes historically. That man always knows what minion you want, even when you think you want a different one. He's got big brain plans. Yogg is you know. another one that's trash. You just, I will not be convinced otherwise. You just don't do it right, man. You got to level sell here, power, or replace it. I <laughs> always lower roll. I always lower roll. Of course you do. Milhouse is something I found very fun recently. I've played him twice, like, ever, and I've gotten second and first with him, both times hitting Caligos and being like, wow, this is really degenerate. Milhouse Why don't they do great. this more often? Milhouse on Milhouse Caligos is, is absurd. You. When you hit Caligos, that's crazy. You get, like, Milhouse ten right. battle crowds in a turn as opposed to, like, three. It's really stupid. Tess, I'm actually up 186 MR in three games. I have two first places with Tess and a seventh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Tess. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, Tess is pretty much as good as your opponents are. Like, if your opponents are all average, she's average, and you end up dying because of tick damage. But, like, if your opponents are all nuts, like, you take damage, like, once, and then you just, like, go off. That's great. Uh, I don't know. I think, yeah, I think George is probably the safe answer for my favorite. He's been around forever, and I've always enjoyed him. I've had stints where I like Lich Girl, but I'm really good at getting 8th and 3rd recently. Like, she comes and goes because the meta changes where, like, there's, like, a, a Yodora or a Lich King that just kills you. And if you low roll and get, like, a Millhouse on turn fight 2 or, like, a Lich King on fight 1 as a person you're already hurting yourself, you just don't have life to work with. So you need to, like, not low roll early game matchups. And nowadays, there's so many heroes that, like, the first four turns are stronger than the average hero. So you, like, you almost yeah. always hit a couple, and it's just, like, you just don't have enough life. So I've been doing pretty bad with her, which is not that surprising. She's kind of bad. Yeah. Patches got worse. Never really loved him that much, but now I'll probably never play him. Without cannon or, like, strong murlocs existing, he's kind of just bad. Like, the majority of first place Patches players don't get the hero power until, like, turn six. It's just like, yeah. All right. I don't know. Another yeah. reason that you can tell that Patches is bad is because the best composition on Patches is Beasts. <laughs> Which is just, you know, okay. Yeah. He's bait. <laughs> yeah, but, but even Galakrond's up there for, like, fun heroes. I just don't like him because I never win with him, right? But sure. he's, there's no doubt in my mind that Galakrond's a fun hero to play. Yeah. Spiking, like, an early Foe Reaper or, like, a boat or something. It's just kind of fun. Not too boat shabby. Wins. If you get a boat on turn five, <laughs> you win. Well, you like, win the fight. You don't win the game. But that gives you enough time to get to the other. Theoretically, game. but people are yeah. spiking stuff so early nowadays that. If you have a if you have a boat, bad. the earliest that you could possibly have one, which I think is what eight money. I don't know. No, it's probably earlier that, than that's five. That's five. That's five hero power powers. Right. Oh, turn one to. So turn eight, yeah, to the earliest, you can have a sure. turn six minion. Eight money, and, just turn uh, turn five. First. Eight money, turn five. Yeah, so I mean, I can. Skip. You're not gonna lose the fight, but the thing is, is, it's turn five and turn seven and eight, people start spiking Caligosis anyway, and then you have to start leveling up. And so I, that, there's a reason he's bad, and it's because you, you like sacrifice leveling and stuff to get one tier six minion. That like, it's like you do it because he's fun, not because he's good. There's a lot of reasons why he's bad. How long do you think before they give him the Lich King treatment? Zero? zero? Yeah. I think that, I honestly don't think he'd be broken if you made him zero. Because you still can't Which, roll and keep that minion there. Yeah. So you're still floating money anyway. There are yeah. turns where, like, the current Lich King, or current Galakron curve, where you, like, it's like five money, you, like, level up, buy. No, you don't, you... You freeze it and level it up, the minion, for one, and then you buy it for three, and you waste the money. 
So now well, you'd just be wasting like two money. Like they'd have to, you have to change your curve, which is it'd be really good on one to have it be zero. So you could buy a full. It'd be really minion. good on one. Because yeah. You could buy really good on two because two would be tier. the same. Oh, a tier and level up. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty strong. Three, I don't know how strong not, though. On three, it's the same. On four. And five money. It's it's not the same because you can sell and buy two while still doing it. Which is no, like the yeah, strongest yeah, yeah. thing to do. Yeah, it's it's better every turn. It is that, better every turn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, unless you do the normal curve, because then you level to three and buy a minion on that money. Well, and now you freeze I a mean, minion it, again. It, yeah, you just do the normal wrong. curve while like freezing one minion. So you have slightly little weaker minions because you don't like let it roll for you ever. Yeah. But you're you're getting three choices instead of like the four. Yeah, that'd yeah. be pretty good. I don't think he'd be like insane, but the problem with that is like if I he's think, if he's even he'd kind of good, like... even if he's like tier two, I don't necessarily know if like playing against a random six drop would be that fun. Like, it might create a Eudora where you like verse him on the turn he gets it, and you just like take a lot of damage. Sure. Because he also has other minions that are worth crap. Yeah. So I don't know. They, like one of those, those kind of heroes kind of have to be bad, so they're like fun for people who verse him. But obviously, if you could make him instead of being five and a half, make him like four average placement or four and a half. Maybe not four. Four is like tier, high tier two. Maybe four and a half to five instead of five and a half. I'd be for it, right? Yeah. I'm all for fun heroes also being good. I just don't want to have a fun hero that's good that when I verse them on turn eight kills me. Which sure. is what Eudora did. So yeah, this has been, uh, what, the only patch since the uh, Shalomance Academy came out? Yes. There was a minor bug patch the other day, but it didn't do anything really um sure yeah they talked about a battle pass since we had our last episode you want to talk briefly about that it hasn't really been anything official they were just like asking for feedback on like reddit and stuff right yeah so for or, like, anyone who didn't emails. hear about this for anyone who didn't hear about this there was a survey sent out to a lot of top hearthstone players about potentially move, moving to a battle pass like a survey seeing what they thought about it and a lot of people were concerned that you'd get less rewards. Uh, I think for free to play players. Yeah, it was, play either Ixar, it was either Ixar or D Knight. Is D Knight Ella Ixar? I don't know. Dean, it was one of yeah. the Dean is Ixar. Uh, one, of the, one of the Hearthstone developers sent out a tweet the, like yesterday or something like that. Basically Wait, saying really? Yeah, basically saying that the battle like the battle pass, uh, if they decided to move forward with it, would be Ixar exactly the same. It'd be exactly tweet. the same for your gold rewards, and you'd get more non. Ixar is how did they not are intending yesterday. Oh well, I don't know who it was. But uh, it was, one, it was one of the Hearthstone developers. Hearthstone developer, huh? Yeah. Huh. But yeah, basically. Yeah. So they said it'd be the same amount of gold rewards on average, and it would be more non-gold rewards. So I'm. I don't know. I'd love to see it just be a traditional battle pass where you keep your free to play stuff in the quest as is and you pay 10 bucks to have access to good value if you play enough that you level it all the way up. Like, I don't. That business model works for every game that has a battle pass, and I think it would be completely fine and healthy for Hearthstone. Sure. And you wouldn't have anybody upset that you're free to play quests and money and anything's changing. But if they're also going to make it where the battle pass is like that and free and they're increasing the amount of free stuff, I suppose that's better. But. Yeah, if it's if the battle pass is free, I'm glad that people are speaking well, so, up and they're not making things worse for people who play the game a lot. Because I've I've definitely seen that cause harm to a game when they like alienate the top one percent of like in terms of people who play the most. Yeah, upsetting the people who play the most is not a smart thing or a well, fun so thing for those people. I've got it. I've got it right here. And in front of the tweet. Small, but, uh, oh, you no, 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 no. The, like the original charts that they uh, yeah I mean that was that one is a huge problem yeah so like this one like if you really dig into it it's less money for it, people who play a lot because they like get past it and then they aren't getting anything for other games basically yeah I don't know once you level but it up completely basically where I was going with that is they are talking about doing it so like the normal battle pass system is free but like you have like the upgraded battle pass kind of like Fortnite had where you get extra rewards, but so you get the free rewards and you get the extra rewards. 
I don't know. Well, yeah, the free battle pass, you just, like, leveled up slowly, and it, like, stopped at, like, 50 or 60 in Fortnite, and then if you buy it, you got everything. Yeah. Other games have done that. Very similar style. I think that would work fine. The, current, the reason everyone was upset about the first iteration is that it was, like, apparently replacing, like, quests and, like, the 10 money for every three wins and stuff to be, like, that version where you, like, as you play, you level this up. And for the people who play, like, an absurd amount, like, you know, 20 games a day plus, it was a net loss significantly on the amount of gold they'd have for a new expansion. Although, for someone like me, it would be a net positive because I don't play that much, but I would still prefer to make it that everybody gets, you know, more or the same. Sure. Otherwise, I'm totally against it. I'm, I'm sure... You... Yeah? Uh, so when do you think... So we're in phase two right now of this uh, year. When do you think we're going to get an announcement about the new game mode? Oh, really? Hmm. When do you think? So there's another one coming out besides Battlegrounds, yeah. huh? Yep. That was in the original roadmap for this year. Original roadmap for this year. Yeah, they had roadmap and it was phase one, phase two, phase three. We're in phase two right now when Skyrim's dropped. So sometime between now and the next ex expansion, they're you know coming what, out with a new format. You know what time of year they released that patch of that roadmap? Uh, it was at the beginning of the year, so it, or the beginning of the Hearthstone year. So that would have been like what, December? No, Ash just came out in April, right? So it would have been around April. Oh really? Yeah. The roadmap came out in April, I think. I think you can look it up. It's not hard. I think it's, if you do Hearthstone roadmap. Okay. This is year the, year of the Phoenix, Phoenix right? roadmap. Yep. 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 Phase one, phase two. Yeah. So I've got it up. So phase two. Add a card expansion, new card mechanics, new tavern brawls, more battleground stuff, a seasonal event, balance updates, new game mode, and something they haven't revealed so far. Huh. And then phase three, which is going to come out with the last expansion of the year, would be card expansion, card mechanics, tavern brawls, battleground, seasonal events. Uh, balance updates. So we've seen. We've gotten everything from phase one. That was like Spellburst was a new mechanic. The free class decks came but out. Spellburst, Spellburst was phase two. What That's is the it? Card mechanic. What yeah. was the card mechanic in phase one? Outcast? Outcast, probably, yeah. They got us the duplicate protection in phase one. Oh, wow. Free class update. Card expansion phase was. Card mechanics, Tavern Brawls, Battlegrounds. Wait, Battlegrounds came out in Phase 2? No, 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 no. Oh, no, Battle they just changed it. When it says Battlegrounds, it just changes, yeah. Um. New game yeah, so mode in Phase new 2. New game mode. What a spell lock. Uh, I, it just means that they haven't revealed what that is yet. What, uh, phase three, sure. So. What, uh, was there a seasonal event in Phase 2? Uh, we haven't had one yet, right? Which, based on, phase like, two, top left, you would assume the started. seasonal event would come out before a new game mode. Assuming that, like, this left to right, top to bottom is the order and things. Because we've got Maybe. the expansion, the mechanic. Tavern Balls is kind of an over-looming thing, but I'm sure there's been some new things there. We've got Battlegrounds changes now. So we've gotten balance updates. So we're probably on, like, seasonal event time and then a game mode time. So I guess that's why they have the it, other modes now, because they should have shoved a bunch of things into the other modes tab. <laughs> sure. Makes sense, and then I suppose. Phase 3 is where it says achievements and progression. So phase 3 is probably mm. when. So that's the battle next pass, expansion is when, we'll, is, is when we'll see the oh, well, battle pass. Well, no, achievements probably. is just something they've been talking about forever. Where it's just like, like Steam or Xbox achievements, where it's like, you know, something to do. I don't know Maybe. what rewards will come with it necessarily, but that's, I mean, that's something X has been talking about for years, I feel like. They're just kind of waiting for, like, 
the right time and the right way to do it. Sure. Stuff like that, which is kind of interesting. So as far as the new game mode, if you had to guess what it was, what would you do? And if you had to pick what you wanted it to be, what would it be? Fascinating. I can go first. Go first. For if I had what I what I wanted it to be, it would be a rotational wild format. Kind of how they have different expansions available for Arena. Hmm. So like my perfect world, because I hate Raza Priest, would be okay, maybe there's an expan maybe for one rotation cycle, there's no mean streets of gad gadget sand, so there's no Raza or Kazakis. Or maybe there's no Knights of the Frozen Throne, so there's no Anduin, there's no Malfurion, there's no Rexar, whatever. Stuff like that. I hate to be and, that guy, like, but there's like almost no chance that's what they add. <laughs> They're not gonna like split up an already fairly small community of wild hosting into like well, different game modes. So they already talked when they talked about this new game mode. They, they said may it's have a use set like that. Right, oh, your pass official, collection. Their official press well, release. Said Battlegrounds that, uses that your new, pass collection then, without actually having you to have the cards. It uses like old cards. That's no, that's past cards. It's not your right, pass, pass collection. collection. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so that, that would be my ideal world. Where it's if, like some wild, some standard cards. And you have to like. Where it's, where it's so it's wild, arena, but the... constructed basically. Like you have only certain sets are in. You have to build decks with those yeah. sets, which we've seen I, in tavern like, realms before, and there's a ranked for it, or like a rating for it or something. Yeah, or like even just like you know, the a ladder system like how standard and wild has. But I kind of like so I like wild because I get to play with my old cards, but I don't love the power level. I. I like the power level of standard a little bit better. Oh, the standard's a little too weak for me, but like wild. Is standard is pretty strong high. nowadays. <laughs> is it? We're in the past it's... where I mean, yeah, they had zero mana. Like most of the decks that you keep making are just in standard minus like three cards, <laughs> and I'm like, you could just play that at standard; it'd be nuts. Like, like the survival of the fittest, like druids and stuff people were doing in wild were also just the same thing in standard. Right? All these cards are new. Sure. There's some really degenerate stuff. In standard too, right now. But obviously that does change. There are weak sets and strong sets in standard, whereas wild's well, always strong. So new game mode is fascinating. I could have never predicted, like battlegrounds, because auto chess kind of came out of nowhere. But what a great sure. way, like, to be able to use Hearthstone cards in a totally different, unique way. Big fan of that. I wouldn't mind, like you said, with the like certain things in, but the problem with that is it's like still the same gaming experience for the most part. Like you just like net deck a deck or two and then play it and like I don't know, you have different matchups, it so it's slightly a, different, but it's it would have a, it would very have a similar feel. feel. Yeah. It would have a distinct feel from the uh, from standard and from wild because it isn't either, either of those cards. Yeah, but it's right? still like you know thirty cards net decked off eight just replay. Against the same like six decks, eight decks. It's also really hard. Like it'll be a lot harder for them to balance them with like decks. They're just like picking random sets. So there'll probably be a few outlying decks that a lot of people play. I don't know what the longevity of a mode like that is, or how they would like ever monetize something like that. Like you assume they're gonna do something like Battlegrounds where they can monetize it and make it like a big thing. Maybe. But I don't hate that idea. New game mode maybe could also be like. Uh, Honestly, in, you know what I think in, it might in be? Client, in client tournament mode? I think a roguelike mode is something that could spring up. A I know Ixar, I know Ixar was a big fan of Slay the Spire. I don't know if you've heard yeah, of like Binding of Isaac or Slay the Spire, but it's a roguelike mode where you kind of like work your way up through a dungeon or whatever. And in Slay the Spire, you use cards to do that. So there could be a game mode where like you have a certain set of cards and you like send some out to battle, you know, you put your Fail Reaper out there, your whatever card, and they have to, like, fight the certain, like, boss at that, that tier level, and you, like, climb up until you win, without, and you try not to die. So there's, like, it's kind of would be, like, an adventure, but... So it's Dungeon Run? I think it'd be run. very... Uh, it's not, like, Dungeon Run, no. It would be... It, it's, it's different like that. A roguelike is much different. Like, if you lose, you have to restart and stuff, and it's... I guess you do that in Dungeon, but, yeah, I think... A way better version of adventure mode, kind of like that, could exist. It's hard to explain if you don't like know what any of those like roguelike games are. 
But if you just like Google Slay the Spire, I think there's like a world where you could do something like that with Hearthstone. So it's like you play a card, like you have a hero that's like animated, it's like on the board and he's staring down like any amount of enemies and you use your cards like, you know, Frostbolt and you play it out and like a little Frostbolt animation would play and it would hit like the enemy you targeted. And so you've got to take your like hero or character of choice through different types of increasingly difficult thing, opponents and bosses. And each time you win, you get to like add a few cards to your deck, which this sounds exactly like Dungeon Run. But there's a, probably a way to make it better, I think, that they could do. Uh, sure. Something like that would be kind of interesting. That is a lot like Dungeon Run, huh? But Dungeon Run just sucked. So like, hopefully they make something better than that. Hey, hey, Dungeon Run was great for the first like two months it came out, <laughs> and then the, and then they did it like four more times. It wasn't fun anymore. But like, it is crazy how similar that is to Dungeon Run. Now that I think about it, but I don't know, something like that maybe could exist. Um, I mean, I wouldn't hate. I would that, love like I, a. I want something a bit more. Feel like a Hearthstone chess game. Involved. It looks like. Mixing my cards. You want one where it's, you have to own the cards to use them type deal? Yeah, I'd like another constructed type thing. Mm. I, you have wild and standard. So. And you have wild standard casual game modes. You have four game modes you can be playing. That's casual so many, wall. bro. Hello. <laughs> you have some tavern brawls too. I wouldn't mind another Battlegrounds type thing, but I just don't know what that looks like. Yeah. Um. Imagining like a. I I'm fair like, while I was sitting here, I imagined it really. Card. I had, like, what if they do as the new game mode like an in client tournament mode type of thing? Well, but tournament mode like, is something that could exist that they just like said won't, right? Did they say that? I'm pretty sure they said something along those lines, which is like, don't expect any time soon. Because, I mean, at this point, they have the technology for matching. I think eight not. Up so, at once, the old right? tournament mode they wanted, people were wanted, was like where they could like run official tournaments with people that sign up or whatever, and like it makes matchups in a bracket. What I think they could do is like the Fortnite style tournaments that are now coming to Rocket League that are kind of popular, where it's like from 4 to 8 p.m. EST, there's this, you know you know, Faux Weeper Clash or whatever they want to call it, right? Where it's a tournament where you queue up and you'll get, like, random opponents, all right? And maybe you win, you get a point, you lose, you lose a point or whatever, and whoever has, like, the most points at the end of this four-hour session or something wins. Something like that could be very interesting. So I know in Fortnite they have it, like, four hours, or they do, like, four hours, but, like, they cap it at, like, ten games or something, and it's, like, whoever has the most points, and points are more intricate in that game because you have kills and placement and everything. But you could do like maybe twenty games of Hearthstone and like best records, like win sure. or something, and get. Uh, I just got a pack for watching you. Let's take a monitor. That's a big pause. Nice. Um, I, mean, I probably got one from you too. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Um, so yeah, I don't. I don't know what I was saying. Yeah, the tournament like that kind of mode could be kind of interesting, where it's like it throws you into tournaments with random players. I, I mean, ideally they just do both. Like I don't. There, there doesn't need to be a word they're both like there could easily i feel like both could exist i don't know what the reasonings necessarily were for not wanting the tournament sure. mode in there but i I'd, I'd like to see both versions of like tournaments come where you can like host your own bracket in client without having to add people to friends lists you could like challenge them through the tournament mode section and submit your decks like through the the thing so you can't change it once you've started the tournament or whatever like I think yeah. this could be obviously very cool. I understand it would take a little bit of work. It may not be worth it because it only appeals to a certain amount of tryhard audience. But that'd be super cool. And then the tournaments where you queue up against random people, maybe it's 30 games in a span of like four hours. And you kind of have to get a feel for You can like switch your deck out. So you kind of have to feel for like what you're versing a lot of, make changes to your decks on the fly to try to get the best win right out of 30 card decks maybe. And then the top 10 players are get money or whatever, like in Hearthstone or Fortnite, like the top person would get a like grand, second player would get stuff like that would be kind of cool too. Something like that could even work to qualify into their esports scene, right? Yeah. Lobbying if they the make game. a tournament mode, then like, it, like in client, like how you were talking about, like so people can't change their decks, that's like the easiest way to get people more interested in like 
GM formats, right? Because like, wild Hearthstone competitive when, when, and it's really competitive, yeah. But like, but like, um, because you think about like when specialist was a thing. Ah, I'm How a specialist, dude. Hearthstone players ever got to play with a specialist? Like only people who did 20, tournaments that were. I mean, in yeah, the entire world. Yeah, just the top like, players who had to play with that format. Right. So like, it was a fun thought experiment, but like. No one other than the top of the top players. But you could have, yeah, you could have this tournament you, mode where it's like four hours, 30 if, games, and you could have, well, when you queue up against the person, you see with their classes, and you decide if you want your warrior deck one, warrior deck two, warrior deck three, which have different sideboards, and they would choose the same exactly. out of their, like, warlock three decks that are all the same. Exactly. And so, like, one week it could be you can only have one class with one deck with a sideboard, and one next time it could be you can play any deck, you can switch every game type of deal, and you could have, like, different formats in these tournaments with random people you're getting. Like, I mean, it could really work. I mean, they have this in so many games, this kind of tournament online system. I mean, yeah. they even have it on chess.com, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> like, and they I have think, it everywhere. And the thing is, like, when Specialist was the go-to format for, like, Grandmasters or, what, or all the HCT stuff, like, it was probably the, the most interesting format that I've seen. Really? In that, sure. if, for that, but, like, no one cared because it's not a lot what of they play. Watch that competitive Hearthstone stuff to get ideas for like decks and how to play them and to see them played at the top level. But if you have that specialist, you're flying like a specialist deck like, with like weird tech cards that wouldn't make sense in a ladder, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm like I'm not even saying specialist is good, but if you have a thing like this, you could alternate it. So like, if they don't want to play the week that's like specialist or the day even that's like a specialist tournament, they don't have to. Exactly. But you can like have alternating game modes. And even in the tournament mode, you can combine it with your idea. Where like one week's a tournament, gadgets and cards are banned. One week in the tournament mode, where you have thirty games max in a set of like five hours or whatever, maybe, you know, Descent of Dragons is banned, or maybe only four or five sets are allowed. Yeah. And so you've got like the few hours beforehand to come up with decks. And that way, honestly, net decking is very difficult because you can't really like get information out that fast and get enough sample size that quickly. That would really reward, like, just actually talented deck builders in a way that hasn't really been seen before. Where right now the only way you would get rewarded by being a good deck builder is you get to play it for like a week before it catches on. Yeah. Or use it to like give viewers two sheep or something. It's like I don't know. So honestly, all of our ideas could really just be thrown into one for the most part. Be kind of sweet, because you could have like the the typical tournament mode where you sign up, it puts you in a bracket. You submit your deck, so it like shows your collection. Click four and hit the submit button. Like it can be very simple. Like it would fit in the Hearthstone UI. Like you click like three buttons, it keep it easy and fresh and it's interesting and understanding. It'd be you know, under the level like eight under eighteen deck slot levels of comprehension. Keep it very simple. <laughs> don't want to go. You don't want to go past eighteen deck slots worth of understanding because that gets way too complicated. You have to scroll more than once. Keep it nice oh. and simple. Everything works out for everybody. I don't know I if mean, they'll add that though. Like it's it's hard Blizzard, to say. Blizzard is still a small indie company. We just got the ability to move our decks around. Dude, in the that was kind of like, sick, huh? What a nice yeah. update. Kind of crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I really doubt they'll add like the the standard like bracket submitting decks tournament mode that people are asking for for like esports because it just doesn't appeal to enough players. But the tournament mode where you get to queue up and play against just random people like for a set of time, a certain amount of games, something like that could exist, and they could change the constraints and the things like every week or every day like tavern ball type deal that could be really interesting yeah. but it's hard to say when you have like right now i think like battlegrounds and standard are the most popular two modes and they're wildly different like i don't know it makes sense honestly now that i think about it it does make sense to do a game mode that is your collection because they can keep like all the people who don't have a collection playing battlegrounds like all those people got bored of arena, they're playing Battlegrounds, you run the course on Battlegrounds, and then you release a new game mode. Kind of right before Battlegrounds gets stale for a lot of them, so they have a choice to play either. And in between, yeah. you add like a constructed, where well, you need a collection game mode. Yeah, I mean, you were asking how you monetize the format I was talking about. Well, now, you just, well, you have to have the cards, right? That's how you monetize it. They have to right, have the cards. exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's And not... if, it's, if it's partially wild and partially standard, right? You might get some of the standard players playing it, and but maybe a lot of them like Play you standard for a this. while. A lot of them like were disenchanting all their wild cards when they 
No, I'm just chanting all my wild cards. I just chant my bad wild cards. Well, no, I'm saying like. <laughs> back, yeah, there are a lot back, of people who do. Way, way back when, you you used to just just chant anything that rotated. So mm. now, I mean, now that you're starting to play wild again, you're like, oh, I just enchanted Baku. I have to go back and craft it. I just enchanted Baku because Baku got Hall of Fame and was worth money. But sure, sure. But like the point still stands. You know. Yeah. You, I mean, you, because they have the wild stuff in the shop now, right? So, yeah, so it's easy to monetize the game. I like that. Yeah, I think that'd be yeah. the best, like that I can think of. I'm sure there's much better. I can't think of. They're very smart people that work for Blizzard. But if you're gonna make a tournament mode, I don't want it to be the basic. Just join up in this bracket. That tournament starts at this time. Choose from your collection these five decks, and it makes a random bracket, and it's like a conquest room. I'd like the like five hours, four hours, three hours, certain amount of games. With different rules and different ways to play every week, I think that'd be a lot cooler. Because it so, combines like, your idea, by also yeah. like making it like competitive that it's like interesting to play for people because they don't have to have like a separate ladder, but they could have like points or like prizes or something. Like maybe if you get first place, you get a legendary, or you make you win ten games, you get a card back or something. And it's like once a week. There's yeah. a lot of ways they could make it interesting and worth playing. Kind of like how the tavern brawls that were, like arenas used to be. Where you make a deck and you'd have like up to three losses or whatever, and you'd get like in a lot of gold, but they costed like gold to compete in or whatever. Oh, the tavern brawl is so, like, yeah, brawl is yeah. like it's kind of like that, right? I mean, you make those like tournaments at certain times, and they change every time. Sure. It's like it's a separate mode, it'd be kind of cool. We've been going for All right. like an hour, we should probably wrap her up. Hour and 20. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited so, for the new game mode. Phase 3 looks kind of the same we've already seen with a new expansion. I've already seen some achievements, which would be kind of cool, but I'm sure we'll talk about that when that comes. Absolutely. So wrapping up, I'm going to go ahead and plug my uh, social media. We got I am the pod one The pod is V-A-A-P-A-D-1. And that is where you can find me on YouTube on twitch on twitter i am the pod one underscore hs if you like the podcast please continue listening to it give it a nice rating on itunes spotify uh you can also join the people's champ podcast discord that we just started up a week ago uh other than that that's about all i've got and then jordan you want to plug your stuff uh, yeah, I mean, I'm Jordan MG on Twitch, YouTube. I'm Jordan MGS technically on Twitter, but if you search Jordan MG, I'll be either the first or the second option. So. All right. And yeah, I'm pretty much Jordan MG everywhere. Yeah, and you've been getting back into streaming, or even getting into streaming for the first time, so. Yeah, you... I mean, I streamed like three years ago for a little bit, but. Yeah, if you back feel so inclined, now. help Jordan get to affiliate. He's how many followers are you at right now, Jordan? Oh, like 28 or so. 28? Nice. Not so too bad, but... Well on his way. Not quite there Gotta get either. a couple, couple big hosts and he's there, right? So. <laughs> I just really need the followers. The hosts aren't as big of a deal. Sure. So mostly the followers. Well, hosts will get you follows, but... Nah, that's fair. Um, yeah, I was just thinking about the viewer requirement. That's not a big of an issue. But. Yeah. Uh, we also are going to start putting out some more YouTube content. I know Jordan, uh, we're going to, him and I are going to record, what, what, are we, what are you calling it? Deck Hot Shots? Mm, yeah, Hearthstone Hot Shot. Hearthstone Hot Shot. I haven't quite and decided gonna... how I'm going to spin it yet, but it's either going to be like testing out a new deck to see if it's the Hot Shot, or we're going to test out to see if you're the Hot Shot, because like, you're making this deck, right? Either either spin on it kind of works, right? Sure. But yeah, it's the, it's a new mo uh, new show we're gonna do where one of us tries to create a wild deck that is competitive or maybe targets a deck or two and isn't like meta meta in the meta right now. Some fun that can also be good, and then the other person will play meta decks against it and test it out, and then I'll yeah. edit it into a nice video, hopefully, and put it up on my YouTube. I think that's what we're probably gonna do next after this. Yeah, as soon as we're done recording this, so hopefully by the time you're listening to this on 
Spotify or YouTube or iTunes, uh, his YouTube episode will be up, and you can go watch it there. So, wrapping up the podcast, what do we do when we see one of those beautiful, beautiful people's champ on our board? We buy it. We buy it, and it goes kaboom and blows up our Lich King opponent. Blows up our opponent's boards. There's nothing sweeter in Battlegrounds than buying a nice juicy kaboom box and having that nice juicy kaboom box go wham! Smack into that stupid taunt they put there and say, you know what? I don't care about that taunt. And then you see that little bomb go wee and it smacked at our king cannon, baby. That was just justice right there. What a card. Oh, what yeah. a champ. Looking out for the people that they're Kaboomba. Gets rid of those pesky soul jugglers, too. Oh, what a lad. An absolute oh, yeah. champion of men. Yes. And Saving anyway. our life totals day in and day out. Oh, yes. What a card. It All also right. just has an above 50% moon right. Like, all the early turns, so buy it, people. Come on, what are you doing? Buy You're it. sleeping on the people's Get champ. It. Never, never roll past the people's champ. It's just no, 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 no. Kaboomba should be in every wild deck and every battlegrounds board. You're right. Let me. That's my hot shot deck this week. Is it's thirty? <laughs> oh, that'd be a hard deck to beat. Imagine <laughs> if it was deal four to a random enemy instead of random enemy minion. What a card. Uh, nice. <laughs> that card would be so broken and wild. I'd, I'd, I'd play that in wild. <laughs> that card would be degenerate. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you activate the death rattle, you're just like fist of Drax in your opponent's face. <laughs> boom, Hell boom, yeah. boom. <laughs> Unbeatable. What it'd be like soul or uh, so what is that? Pirate cannon then what's it called? The two three? Oh, ship's cannon. Yeah, it's like ship's ship cannons on steroids. <laughs> kind of. Hell yeah. Oh, what a card. So yeah, that'll do it for us. Alright, we're out of here. Peace. Peace. And save this real quick so I don't lose it. Goat or something, and it you know it's just an eight five. It's like pretty big, but it doesn't like necessarily ruin the game for your opponent. But you just get like a random.